We are now at our last award, which is the Life Sciences Company of the Year. And I would like to introduce Hector McKay Dunn, who is going to present the award. So it's it's just a, a great uh, pleasure uh, to be uh, once again uh, a presenting sponsor. And on behalf of my partner, uh, James Haddon, our Ferris colleagues in the group, um, you know, we're just delighted to, to, to be, I guess now it's our 23rd year being the founding, founding and now presenting sponsor for this, this annual awards uh, event. And uh, it uh, never disappoints. And, uh, and this year is beyond our, I think, all of our wildest imaginations if we think back 23 years ago. Our success uh, as a firm in the, in the field has really been a reflection of the success of the entire community. And so we've grown as, as, as the entire community has grown. And through that process, we've been fortunate to, you know, guide many of the uh, groundbreaking financings, uh, mergers, and, uh, and uh, global partnerships, some of which have been mentioned today. And so it's, it's our pleasure now to, to make the, the presentation for the Company of the Year Award. And the title really says it all. Um, so this, this award goes to a company that stands, stands out above all over the past year. And I think you'll all agree that this year, so winner uh, far exceeds that. The criteria includes transitioning from an early stage to perhaps a fully robust established uh, enterprise, uh, raising significant funds, achieving regulatory approval, uh, commercial product launch, um, achieving or nearing commercial success. Well, this year's award winner really ticks all of those boxes and then some. So, uh, so I'm, like, I'm delighted to confirm that this year's recipient is, of course, Upcelera Biologics. Now we'll we'll see a video uh, in a in a moment or two, and that'll better explain the the great achievements for Abcelera. But to mention just a few, um, Abcelera developed an industry leading proprietary operating system for antibody drug discovery. They were at the forefront of the COVID nineteen global response through the discovery of bamlanivimab. Not easy to say. Uh, which was the first antibody therapy for COVID-19 approved by the FDA, of course, and Health Canada. Uh, they were able to bring two antibodies into the clinic within 12 months, quite amazing. And if that wasn't enough, a breakthrough IPO uh, raising more than 550 million US real dollars uh, as part of their IPO. Uh, but that's not, you know, when you think about Accelera and all of their achievements, uh, it's really, as much or more about the future as it is about what they've achieved uh, in the past few years. Um, they've got terrific plans, they've made terrific contributions, but they've got terrific plans and, and really stand to be a dream anchor for our community. They've uh, built a 380,000 square foot global headquarters in Mount Pleasant, um, a first of its kind CMC GMP manufacturing facility for their antibody therapy development. Uh, in part, of course, supported by the uh, Canadian government's uh, $175 million from its Strategic Innovation Fund in support of uh, pandemic preparedness. And so, and not to mention plans to hire hundreds of, many hundreds of skilled scientific and tech professionals over the next several years. And so, so I think Upsilera, it's fair to say Upsilera has helped place BC, secure BC's place, because I'm, many others have contributed, um, on the global map as a tech innovation hub. And so now please join me in watching the video. Actually, 30 years ago, uh, the field that we work in, which is therapeutic antibodies, uh, didn't really exist. Uh, in fact, you know, the large pharma was skeptical that these large molecules, which are naturally made by immune systems, could be uh, best-in-class drugs. The technologies that we're bringing to it are really focused on revamping that entire process, on using the modern tools of science, the computation, the artificial intelligence, the molecular biology. In my grad work, I was working on microfluidic technologies and specifically on how we could use those to analyze single cells. 
it was that platform that I then took to UBC. And over the course of seven years, we built up capabilities, basically searching, decoding, and analyzing natural immune systems one cell at a time. Uh, and that laid the foundation for what became Epcelera. So really a homegrown technology uh, that dates back, you know, at least uh, to 2000. And even before that here in Vancouver, you know, some pioneers that laid the foundation of even thinking about new ways to do antibody discovery. Uh, right up to before the pandemic hit, we had run some uh, test cases or pressure tests where we simulated a pandemic and had all hands on deck to prove that we could shrink that discovery uh, timeline from many, many months to only 60 days. Um, and it was right after that that the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the U.S. Uh, that very same day, we called an all hands meeting and you know, recognize that whether it was ready or not, we were better positioned than anyone uh, to step up and to bring the first therapeutic antibody to the clinic at world record speed. And to see that now go out and help what is now over 600,000 patients um, to save over 10,000 lives is something that you aspire to do if you're in biotech. Uh, and when it's done in the course of a year, I mean, that's impactful and really galvanize the team around uh, what could be accomplished. You know, if a positive thing could have come out of the pandemic is that it has really raised the profile of the importance of life science research and the opportunity in technologies to better understand and uh, ultimately to treat diseases. You know, thinking about the sector and the future of biotech here in British Columbia and Canada, um, I really do hope that people recognize what a position we're in. Uh, never before have we had the opportunity to build companies on a global scale that can really make a difference. Uh, this is an important time. It's important we get the policies right. It's important that we think big and we make the investments to make sure that we're scaling companies and taking you know, this early opportunity and making it something that lasts not just for decades, but for a hundred years to come. So please join me in welcoming the COO of Absalera to say a few words, Veronique Nicole. Thank you very much, uh, Hector. And thank you, Wendy, and the entire Life Census BC team for really giving us the opportunity to come together uh, tonight and, and celebrate the achievements of, of our community. I also want to thank the Life Census BC board uh, who donate their time generously uh, to build and elevate our life sciences community here in BC. And I'm so delighted and honored uh, to accept this award on behalf of all Epsilorites. Uh, I'd also like to congr congratulate um, all the recipients here today. Uh, it's an honor to stand here. And it makes me so proud as a Canadian to see what we're building right now in BC. We, we founded Epsilera nearly a decade ago. And when we started running out our business plan for the BC New Ventures competition, uh, we're given two different types of feedback. One was you can't build a company like that uh, in Canada. There's not enough capital, there's not enough expertise, uh, it's never been done before. And then there was another group of people who told us, well, you're not capturing, uh, your plans are not capturing the opportunity that you have ahead of you. And they got it. They saw what we were trying to build and they encouraged us to think bigger. And that's what we did. Uh, and I'm glad we listened uh, because we kept aiming high. And while the path forward had many unknowns, uh, we trusted our instinct. We saw BC as a place to build a solid foundation for our home. And as we were incubating at UBC, uh, we saw the immense talent and potential of the people around us. Uh, we saw creative minds, new technologies, curiosity, and the willingness to really do work that matters. And we believed in BC. We had a few award recipients referring to a village uh, throughout the evening, and it couldn't be more true. It takes a community to build 
a lasting company. And I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge those organizations and the people who helped us along the way and contributing to removing some of the barriers uh, in our path. And that includes IRAP, UBC, uh, Western Economic Diversification, Genome BC, NSERC, CIF, EDC, and the mentors and investors who helped us along the way. Uh, special thanks to Doug Jensen, uh, who's also being recognized tonight, and thank you for believing in us so early. Uh, hopefully, some of us can uh, still keep some hair on our head and, and still do, do great things like, like you have. Um, really only need to look at the pandemic to see what Canada can do and what role it can play on the world stage. And last year, we rallied, collaborated with research institutions to access patient, patient samples. And, Today, our antibiotic therapies have saved uh, more than 10,000 lives. And there are many other homegrown companies, uh, also from our local universities, that played a major role in, in the pandemic. And I think about Equitas and Precision. And we do the work that we do, and we continue to push the frontiers of science as an industry because it can change lives. And this past year has really exemplified why this is so important. Uh, what we see today with all the companies who are also honored is that we have momentum as an industry and we have so much to offer to the world. And if we choose to, we can turn BC into a world-class biotech hub. And I think there's at least two things we must do together to move forward. The first one is to keep innovating. And most importantly, we need to make sure that those early innovators, they have the ability to scale here in BC. And to make this happen, we have to work, to work together. And everyone uh, in the Zoom today has a role to play. Uh, and you have the power to make a difference. Entrepreneurs, investors, policymakers, scientists, universities, uh, industry associations, and I'd like to encourage each of us today to ask ourselves, what can I do to contribute to making BC a hub for life sciences? And we must seize the opportunity that we have uh, in front of us and leverage the momentum that we've built. Uh, and finally, I wanna thank all at Celerites for their commitment and dedication over the years, and also their families who continue to provide incredible support and all of you who also contribute to creating uh, our life sciences industry. Uh, I've never been so hopeful and excited about the future. Hopefully you can see my enthusiasm and, and also share it. And the opportunity we have collectively ahead of us as an industry uh, is immense. And we can think bigger and turn our village into a global city. Thanks again. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I hope we'll be able to connect uh, in, in person in the near future.